Hi guys and welcome back to the vlog. Um, this video is going to be all about the curriculum we used for the 2019-2020 school year. I'm going to tell you what we loved, what we didn't like, um, yeah, and just kind of give you our um, wrap up of the school year. As most of you know, this year for homeschooling has been a little different because the end of the school year, um, coronavirus hit and so things changed a little bit for us. I normally only homeschool my younger two children. My daughter Jillian um, is a fifth grader this year. She'll be going into sixth grade and then my son Noah is a second grader moving on into third grade. I do also have a high schooler who did get to be home with us for the second half of her freshman year. Normally we also participate in a co-op home link program that we go to once a week where the kids get to do all sorts of fun um, kind of extracurricular activities. They do do some core classes, um, like my son takes a reading class and my daughter takes a writing class, but for the most part they take PE and music and drama and cooking classes and just the fun things that mom doesn't really have the ability to do here at home. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and show you the things that we use here in our home. So this episode is going to have a lot of meat to it, a lot of information. I will leave everything I show linked down below. Um, I'm not going to show you every single resource that I use because I won't have time for that. Um, but I want to kind of show you the things that we really did love and then the things that just didn't really work for the way we homeschool. So I'm going to show you resources for math, for reading, for history, for science, and for language art. I'm going to start with math. When it comes to math, my children are all very different. My oldest, who is in high school, is a math genius and she will be done with most of her math um, by the end of her freshman year. So she a lot of times is a great resource and helps with math. My daughter Jillian is more like me and doesn't love math and struggles a little bit more. I wanted a tool that could help her have a visual um, reference and some sort of a lecture that would help her um, with math. And so we came across Teaching Text, which is a great resource, and we really love this. So I get her the giant book, and then we also use the CDs. We don't do the online program, um, although as she progresses, we might. Um, but we we really like this style. Um, I like that she has the physical book in her hand that she can use, as well as the um, CDs that give her the lecture, but it also um, has a grade book and it kind of frees mom up from having to help her with math because she gets taught how to do it from the program. Um, and so yeah, it's it's been really good. And then it's all also in there. It corrects everything and grades everything for her, shows her what she got wrong, and then she can, it'll highlight the problems she got wrong and we can go back and correct those. So we love teaching textbooks for her and I definitely recommend it. And then my son uses Horizons Math. Now he is definitely more math brained and is kind of outgrowing Horizons. So we will probably also be transitioning him to teaching him textbooks after next year. They do start at third grade, but I, their teaching style is a little bit different. So I just want to make sure that he's getting all of the meat from his Horizons program before we move on to a different style. But what I really love about the Horizons Math is it um, um, teaches shapes and it teaches number order and place value and it helps him work with calendars, um, helps him count with money and do time. Um, and it's a lot of repetition, which he sometimes gets bored with, but I find that because they were so repetitive in the first couple of years, um, it's made him really great at math. And he, a lot of times, will do math in his head, doesn't always have to have a piece of paper and a pencil to write it down. Um, but yeah, so like here's kind of what the inside of these books looks like. Okay, keep going. Okay, 
Okay, so moving on to English. Now, English is also very different for my children. And so the way I go about teaching it is different and they are several years apart in school. So we, we do math and English um, and reading as separate curriculums for them. And then science and history we do combined and I just give my older daughter more assignments or more research or more writing than I would my son. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we used for Jillian. I really prefer kind of a eclectic mix of things. I don't always stick with one specific curriculum across the board. And that is very true of my language arts um, material. So the bulk of her schooling for language arts this year was from her Fix-It Grammar. And we did the Robin Hood level. Um, the Fix-It Grammar, I'm torn when it comes to this curriculum. Um, being an English major myself, I really liked she was learning things like the who, which clause and commas and capitals and punctuation and um, main clauses and dependent clauses and you know when to indent and when not to and how to label all of those things when proofreading and editing. It was a lot of information for her brain though and she did not enjoy this curriculum. I enjoyed this curriculum but I think it was more for the child who wants to be a writer, wants to be an editor. I just think for her we'll have to go about it differently because this was not her favorite. We also used the Evan Moore How to Write a Story book, which I really love. Um, this book helped her identify characters, how to describe characters in a story, um, you know, has some great writing prompts for each of those, um, taught her about character development, you know, how to plan a story, how to describe a setting and identify a setting while reading how to identify and choose a conclusion for your story. And so we really enjoyed this and she was able to implement these things in a story that she's writing on her own that she's typing up on the computer. So this we really love. I love all of Evan Moore's stuff. I think they're really great um, because they're just short little, you know, one section lessons at a time. I mean, you could do this, describe a character page one day and the characters in the story the next day. Um, and so I really enjoy that format. Um, we also use the Evan Moore daily handwriting. And for her, we do the cursive handwriting because I think it's very important that kids still learn how to do cursive handwriting. So now that she knows how to print, uh, we're working on cursive. In addition, we used the Common Core English Language Arts State Standard book. Um, I have to be honest, I do not love this curriculum. We used this simply because it was recommended by our consultant that we meet with through our co-op program. Um, because as a sixth grader next year, my daughter will have to start taking the standardized testing. Um, and this is similar to the format in which she will be tested on. One thing that I used for her and for my son that I really do love is the Illustrated Grammar and Punctuation book from Usborne. And this is just a beautiful visual um, for, you know, parts of grammar. So verb tenses and verbs and adjectives. It's bright, it's colorful, it gets them engaged, it helps them to remember. So this book I absolutely love and recommend and you can use it really for any age group. Um, so, you know, it goes over grammar, punctuation, style. I recommend that. Okay, so for my son, for language arts, I again use a hodgepodge of all kinds of things. The majority of his lessons this year came from Language Lessons for a Living Education, and I really loved this curriculum. Um, it's from a biblical standpoint, um, which I liked, and then each lesson was real easy. So you have a story that you read 
every week and they ask you um so it's you know narration practice and so it asks you questions about the story um that he then has to recite back to me um you know day one he would have a memorization thing so it would give him something to memorize um it would work on short u sounds sight words day two of this lesson was proper nouns and months of the year so you know what are the months of the year um you know helping memorize them how to write them day three was calendar work um, you know, a little poem for the 30 days has September, April, June, and November. And then he had to write down, you know, the four months that have 30 days in them. And then day four was always a tell your story. So it would ask you, so this one says, tell your story. Can you think of a time when you hurt yourself? Did something or someone help you feel better? Tell the story to your teacher when you of when you got hurt. What made you feel better? If nothing made you feel better, think of something that would have made you feel better. Draw a picture of your short, of your story. So, you know, and then he has to draw, and then he has to write a couple sentences about his picture. And then day five was always kind of a wrap up. So there was the spelling practice, um, using the short U words for that lesson, you know, so they were always listed up here. And then there was some sort of an activity that would go along with them. Um, yeah, and each lesson ran basically that same way. It was just, you know, different word, yeah, different prompt. Um, so this I love. He also uses the Evan Moore handwriting. His is just regular traditional handwriting. Um, you know, it starts out with simple sentences and words, um, but also really good for him, causes him again to slow down. Um, for reading, we use the complete book of sight words. Um, each word has activities that they have to do. Okay, so your sight word is wish. So it says, say the word wish aloud as you trace it. So let's trace that word. Say it out loud so I can hear it, please. Thank you. And now practice writing the word wish. Okay. So search and splash. Find the word wish three times in the word search. There's one. Um, so, you know, you say the word, write the word, use the word in a sentence. And then over here, you have to do some sort of an activity. So this one was matching the ST with the right OP um, for the word stop. Um, so we go through this and then I also have him write out his sight words and he has to pick sight words and turn them into sentences. Dog and fox went to work well when, when the cat sat on the mat at home with the rat. Um, good job. We also really love the Explode the Code books. Um, again, each week has a set of words that he has to identify with the picture, write them down next to the, then he has to circle which words make up the picture and then write them down. We really love Explode the Code as well. And then we also use the Read Naturally Encore program. So this program is on the computer. It comes with a bunch of CDs. These CDs get put in, each one has two stories on it. Um, and it has a workbook that goes along with Put the CD in, the child listens to the story, follows along with the story on the workbook, and then has questions that they have to answer. We really like 
the Read Naturally program. So since we're talking about reading, I'm going to show some of the books we used for read alouds this year. And so they have a reading journal um, that they get to draw in. They can write any words down that they don't understand that mom reads and we can discuss them later. And it's really worked for me in the past to kind of tailor our read alouds um, to our history and science. Yes. So I'm gonna show you some of the ones that we enjoyed the most. We love the Who Was series. And so um, we read a lot of the Who Was books. Um, we also really love the Magic Treehouse books. And we studied Merlin and King Arthur as part of our Medieval Times unit. And so we picked a bunch of the Merlin missions ones. So we have The Night at Dawn and Christmas at the Castle. Um, so we really enjoy those. We also just finished the Map Maker Chronicles series. Um, this isn't necessarily medieval times, but it is about kings and ships. To me, it really fit into that realm of things. And so the kids really enjoyed this. We also read The Adventures of Robin Hood. Um, the kids loved our Robin Hood unit. Um, and this was one of their favorite books that we read aloud this year. Um, this one is the classic Starts Robin Hood. And then the last one I'm going to show you is the story of King Arthur and his knight. It is the Howard Pyle original. And this book is just absolutely beautiful. Um, the kids enjoyed seeing the pictures from this book. So, so those are some of the read alouds we did this year. We did several others that I'm not going to show you. Um, but while we're talking about books that we read for history, I'm going to move into our history. So history is one of my absolute favorite subjects to teach. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we do do it as a combined subject. So the, both of my kids learn the same thing. Um, I just give my oldest daughter more to do with that particular subject. I don't buy a specific history cur curriculum. We choose a topic um, and then we spend the whole year learning about that topic from all different angles. So Last year we did the American Revolution and this year I asked the kids what they were interested in and they wanted to do the Middle Ages and Medieval Times. So we learned about famous people from that particular time period, about cultures and fashions and art and writing and music. Um, we studied how to be a knight and what the feudal system was. We studied castles and you know what made a castle stronger and what made it weaker. Um, we learned about the Black Plague and how that affected people of the time. Um, and so I always find what I'm going to study and then we just pile on all kinds of, you know, living books and documentaries and all kinds of things. The story of the Crusades is remembered as a tale of religious fanaticism and unspeakable violence. So I'm going to show you the things that we kind of used as our spine. So we really love this. And this is famous figures of the medieval times. And at the beginning of the book, it tells you who the contents um, are. And so this one had Justinian, Theodora, Charlemagne, Leif Erikson, William the Conqueror, Richard the Lionheart, Genghis Khan, Francis of Assisi, Marco Polo, and Joan of Arc. And so each one comes with this little character card and so it has information about them. And then you get to make a paper doll. Um, and they actually have two dolls per person, which worked out perfectly. So there's one that's already colored and then one that you get to color yourself. So I would let the kids pick, you know, which one of you wants to color and which one of you just wants to assemble. It usually worked out that my daughter wanted to color her own. My son just wanted to assemble. And so what we would do after getting them assembled is we would add them to our timeline. And so they were just attached and they got to just stay on that. And this timeline was on our history wall. And so every time we learned about a new um, 
piece of history and a new famous figure, we would just add that to our timeline and keep it um, up on the wall for them to look out throughout the year, which is a great visual reference for them to remember um, what was going on at that particular time. Some books that we got from Usborne that I really loved were the Look Inside Castle Book. It has all these great little flip up um, things that tell you information about them. So this one's Living in a Castle, then Walled In, um, Castle Kitchens. So this one was really great. My son really enjoyed that one. Um, the Usborne Little Children's Nights and Castles Activity Book. Again, my son really enjoyed this. It had all kinds of things. So um, music and minstrels, up high, um, what to wear. So what did a knight wear? What did a lady wear? A page, a cook, um, you know, and then he got to you know, figure out which one was which. Um, it taught you how to um, how to juggle um, what a castle would be like under siege. So that was a fun activity book. Um, we also really loved Medieval World by Usborne. This book is full of great pictures um, and lots of information. It's just a fun thing to kind of read through as you're studying stuff. Um, this one, you know, the Black Death and Criminals and Outlaws. Building a Cathedral and going on a pilgrimage and what that was and what that meant and looked like. Um, we also really loved this one. So this is um, the Medieval Messenger and it's written like news articles. So the front says, Mysterious Plague Rocks Europe. You've been bad, says the bishop. And so this one um, was really fun for my daughter to read. And this, again, is from Usborne. What I do with our history units is I create a folder for each one of them that has the name of the unit on the cover and then anything I print out from Teachers Pay Teachers goes in here um, or any other things that I create or find online. Um, this one had a list of some of the famous figures and the kids would put a dot next to the ones that we had studied and so they created a feudal system pyramid and had to keep that in here as a visual reference for what that was and how it looked. So they got to look at what were some famous names and occupation during the medieval times. And then they created their own medieval persona. So they had to give themselves a name and occupation, where they were from, the country they were born in, what they spoke. And then they had to write a little blurb about their life story and draw their own family crest. Um, so they, they really loved their... Um, medieval history unit. Some other materials we used, we also used the Passport to the Middle Ages. I did not use all of this. There is so much information and so many materials in here which are great. Um, it was a little overwhelming and didn't always fit for everything we needed so I was just able to pull things um, that did fit. Like you can create your own passport for all the countries you went to, which is a really great resource because when you're studying about medieval times, you can talk about all the different countries that it was part of. And so they got to have a passport with a sticker every time they went to or studied one of those countries. Um, there are over 50 projects available in this particular um, resource. And so it is really great. It does also have um, stuff for lap books and all kinds of things. So I definitely recommend that if you're in need of material to kind of tie your unit together. Um, and last but not least, we used the writing through medieval history level one, level two. So level two is my daughter and level one was my son. Um, this was really great. Again, I didn't use the entire thing. I was just able to kind of pull pieces as needed um, when we were talking about a certain person. Like, so for instance, my son, he we used this... Um, story. It's called How a Prince Learned to Read. And it's a story about Alfred the Great. And so I would read this to him. And he, um, he would have to, I would always write his summary, but he would have to kind of summarize what the story was about. I would write it down for him. And then he would have two separate 
poppy work lesson. And so that was really great. And then the same thing, my daughter had different stories, different levels um, that pertained to things. It would basically be the same thing for her. She would have a story she would have to read, then she would have to have a written summary, and then um, copy. This curriculum um, was great for tying in some more stories and just for um, penmanship reasons and for writing practice. My kids didn't love it, though. It was a little bit too boring, I guess. Um, and we we ended up not using a lot of the stories in here because they didn't necessarily pertain to what we were doing. However, um, with the unit we're going to be using next year, there are still some stories in here that I think will work. And like I said, they are just good writing practice. So we will use them again um, as we go through and find more stuff um, that fits for our upcoming school year. If your kid is someone who really likes reading historical stories um, and stories written about certain time periods and enjoys writing summaries and copy work, this is great. If your child is someone who dreads copy work and summary writing, this would not be my choice. It is Charlotte Mason based though, and I always love Charlotte Mason curriculum, so I would still recommend it. Um, just kind of gauge your child and their interest um, before, you know, jumping head first in with that particular curriculum. Okay, so for science this year, my kids wanted to learn about the human body. And so again, I took that as kind of our spine and built off of that. I did actually purchase a science curriculum that I used to guide our lessons, um, but then I added good stuff to it. So I purchased the Good and the Beautiful's human body unit. And I opted to get the um, version that is printed out and shipped to you and then also has the PDF download. Very easy to use. Um, we didn't have space to have a science wall in our classroom and so like they encourage you to have a science wall where you put um, these science words um, and definitions up on your wall. I, I didn't have the space for that and so I just laminated them and just kept them out for the kids to look at when we were studying that particular section. One of my absolute favorite parts about this particular um, curriculum is that, so it tells you, it has the table of contents and tells you what you're going to be learning. And then, so it says unit information, you know, how to create a science journal, what to have on your science wall, little um, mini lesson books, lesson preparation experiments, and how to teach this to older children. And this is my favorite part. So it gives you a list of every lesson and the supplies needed for every single lesson right from the get-go. So you can prepare in a, ahead of time. I can't tell you how many times I've purchased some sort of unit and it isn't until you're actually like reading the fine print of each lesson that you're like, oh, well, I need such and such and I don't have that. So we can't do this experiment today. And the kids get so disappointed. This has it all right here laid out for you from the very beginning. So if you order this curriculum ahead of time, you can see week by week and lesson by lesson what you're going to need. It's so great. And most of it is a lot of things that you would already have at home. Sometimes I did have to purchase things, um, but for the most part, I had all of the supplies at home and I just had to compile them. And what I like to do, I like to do um, four lessons at a time. We usually spend about two weeks per lesson. So we, you know, because we do whatever is included in this particular lesson and then I add my own stuff to it. So one week is spent doing the stuff in the Good and the Beautiful curriculum. And then one week is usually spent with all of the add-ons that mom. I like to kind of just up compile everything I'll need and put it into a bin and say it's lesson one, science lesson two. That way I know I can just pull that bin. I have everything I need 
and we're ready in to go. In addition to the um, materials needed, I love that they also give you optional read aloud books. I did use some of these, um, not as many because I had a lot of other things already picked up. With this, I created a science notebook for each one of the kids. Um, you know, they had activities like they had to all about me. So, you know, it has his name, his birth date, his eye color, his hair color, his height, his gender, his weight, his shoe size. Was he right-handed or left-handed? Does he have freckles? Does he have any marks, birthmarks? You know, they would do things like, you know, label the skeletal system and um, write down any notes about the skeletal system you have. Is, you know, so it was just, it was really great. And it all just stays right here for them, ready to go. I was able to print this all out ahead of time. So, you know, not every week I wasn't sitting there going, oh yeah, I need to go print that out. I printed it out from the very beginning when I created their notebooks and it was always just right here, ready for them. And they knew, okay, you know, this is week, this is lesson three. I have to turn to my nervous system page, you know? And so that was really great. We enjoyed it so much that we will be using the good and the beautiful again for next year's science unit. To all of that, I added some fun stuff. I purchased the Magic School Bus Human Body Kit, and this came with all kinds of activities. You've got to build a human skeleton, make a hand x-ray, make a hinge joint, bend real bones, um, name the parts of a skeleton, make a lung model, dilate your pupils, learn about fingerprints, explore spinning and balance, discover what makes teeth strong, and measure your pulse. This kit was amazing. This is the skeleton that the kids made from the material in that kit. So each piece came as a separate thing and they had to, you know, clip it all together and then it hung on the wall. got the Professor Noggin human body game which the kids really liked. It's just a fun you know little um, question and answer game so I always love Professor Noggin and anytime they have a game that goes with either our history or our science unit I like to pick it up. Um, from Usborn we also got the 100 things I should know about food and the 100 things to know about the human body. Again just more um, you know cushy stuff with lots of pictures. Um, the kids enjoy having these really colorful. Visual. One day I asked them to go through their human body books and find a picture that they really liked and to draw their own version of it. And both my son and my daughter were really drawn to this page. The Usborne Complete Book of the Human Body. Again, just another visually engaging book, you know, bright colors. Um, each time we would have a unit, I would, you know, thumb through this and go, okay, we're learning about the heart. Let's, you know, look at these really cool pictures in our Esbon book. Um, we also really like the eyewitness visual dictionaries. And so we have the human body one. Um, you know, this one was great being the skeletal system because it has it all outlined. So, um, when looking at your muscles, so again, just another really great resource that I was able to add to that spine from the good and the beautiful. So those are kind of my, my high points and my low points, things that we really loved, things that were just so, so, um, Pretty soon I will be doing a what we're going to be using for the, the 2020 and 2021 school year. I can't wait to show you guys that. Some of the stuff is very similar um, because we really do enjoy a lot of the curriculum that we use this year and we'll be implementing that again. We do, however, have a new science unit and a new history unit that I'm excited to show you the materials I've pulled for. And we have a brand new language arts curriculum that we're going to be trying with both of the kids. So I'm excited to show you that. And yeah, I'm 
I'm excited for our next so, school year. I'm in full planning mode and I'm so excited about that. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope this was helpful and that you didn't feel overwhelmed. I will link all of the materials that I showed below so that you can purchase them for your own curriculum um, and homeschooling journey if you would like. If you, this video was helpful, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And if you have used any of these materials in your homeschooling, please let me know how you liked them. Um, I'm always curious to know what other people use and what they like and what they don't like. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and I will see you soon.